part of the Press Play Podcast Network. All right, episode four, the Fanfare Podcast. We are here. Listen, football season is underway. High school football Friday nights, Saturday mm-hmm. college game day, and and some other league on Sundays that I'm not quite sure uh, what's going on there. But but here to help me uh, commemorate and kick off uh, this football season is none other than Adam the Bull. Adam, thanks for joining the Fanfare Podcast. It's great to see you, Chase. I'm happy to be here. We're talking about one of my, I won't say what it is yet because I don't want you to, I don't want to steal your thunder, but uh, <laughs> this is one of my favorite, really one of my all-time favorite movies. And it features my all-time favorite actor. Well, I can't wait to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about you, Adam, because you have a lot going on. You, uh, yes. We can catch you on uh, the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. That's on YouTube. Yes. And a lot of clips, Adam, that goes viral quite a bit, man. You, you, uh, you see, Ralph, we've been Ralph blowing up. Well, I tell you, we've been, the show's been blowing up. Uh, we got some, maybe some interesting announcements coming out about the show soon. Ooh. And um, these last two days, actually, this week on Monday and Tuesday, um, I don't know when people are going to hear uh, the show. This will be out this week, right? Yeah, I'm releasing this tonight. Yeah. So the last two days, we've actually broken, uh, had our two, highest viewed shows in the history of the 16 month history of the show the last two days now that's saying something because you had a lot of traction after the hamlin story in buffalo because g bush went on and kind of had yeah, he this went, awesome monologue what? that blew up and that's saying something if it's yeah 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 so it's been huge and i'm I, if the browns play well this year you know that's good that's good for everybody's business who? you know who who yeah. <laughs> uh, you also host your own podcast, uh, Adam, uh, the bullpen with Adam, the bull, which is really, really cool. And bet rivers network, right? Yes, that is. And we we're adding, uh, I, I'm doing three a week. I do it Monday. So the Monday one is, is focused on the, on Cleveland. And then mm-hmm. Wednesday and Friday, it's more of a national podcast. Not that I don't mention Cleveland, but it's just part of the mix. And, uh, uh, starting with the first week of the NFL season, I'll actually be doing a fourth episode where I, I that'll come out Sunday nights. With like looking at all the, the big storylines of that Sunday, yep. you know, so that would be fun. Cool. Yeah, and then, so as if you that. have nothing else going on, you yeah. host a podcast on the Press Play Podcast Network. Up next, it talks about all streaming content and TV shows that you have done. Just an incredible job, Adam. Oh, thank uh, you. It's it's, thank it's one you. of my. I favorite love pods. doing it. I I you know when you and I met, I really liked you, and I wanted to be a part of the awesome. network. And you got some great people here, and mm-hmm. with you with you and your company, and uh, it's a it's. It's really fun to do because my son is on the show every week yes. and we do the kids report. And originally I was going to do it every other week and we pushed it back a little bit just to have a little more time. Sure. Uh, uh, but uh, it's it's a lot of fun. I, I thought I'd only do like 20, 30 minutes every week, but it t- turns into an hour almost every week because there's so much to get into. I've had so many great guests, uh, a lot of media members, but also just a couple people I know in my personal life that are really yeah. into television. And I think I'm recording my sh- episode, my latest episode this Thursday. It's yep. only going to be the second show without a guest, but uh, you'll be a guest on on the podcast uh, next on the next one. Yes. And I'm working on some other people, too. But everybody's had a lot of fun doing it. And I love being a part of it. And by the way, uh, we're doing an ultimate Cleveland S- sports show fantasy league. Ooh. And the reason I bring that up is because two other members of your family here mm-hmm. at Press Play Pods will be in this. Do you know this? I I'm not aware, but I'm guessing it's Holly and Tyvis. That's right. Holly and Tyvis cool. are going to be in the use, even though Holly doesn't work on our show. But uh, hey, yeah, I was like, we need a couple of women in this league. Yeah. So I called Holly and I called this other woman, Allie, that I know who I used to work with in radio who works at the casino now. So uh, anyway, you guys will be represented awesome. nicely. Very cool. In our in our, in our uh, fantasy Football. Super fun. Well, I cannot wait to talk about this yeah. movie, Adam. Uh, how about you reveal the movie? So I text you, I was like, Adam, the football season's here. Let's do yeah. a sports movie. And you go, I know what it is. And you sent this right away. Yes. It's Remember the Titans. And, yes. and uh, you know, it's funny because some people think the movie's a little cheesy. And I don't see it that way at all. Um, I think, I think it's exciting. I think it's emotional. Yes. Uh, it's at times very serious, at times very funny, at times very sad. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it brings everything to the table. Uh, Denzel Washington, Ooh. to me, is the greatest American actor of my life. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I say that with no hesitation at all. I yeah. probably a lot of people would disagree. I don't know. I don't know about a lot of people, but some people would. I he's never in anything bad. He never has a bad. There's only one movie he's ever been in actually that I didn't like, and it wasn't because of him. It was called The Book of Eli. I okay, thought that yeah. Movie, I thought that I, movie was not great. But I did not see he that was, one. Right, but his performance was great. I think I've seen every movie he's been in, or just about, and yeah. he just always brings an A plus performance, and he was magnificent in this movie a tour de force we'll talk about denzel yeah. later uh yeah. because um you know I, I think so uh remember the titans came out in, two, in the year 2000 it's a right. disney movie and so Adam, right. they, they had to really walk that line with the movie that's about race and and, to, and uh, racial integration and right prejudice and racism with football and there's family dynamics there's like injury like Disability yeah, homosexuality dynamics. also yep. an angle of mm-hmm. you know it's like a lot of things that Disney usually doesn't right deal with, but it was good to see and it was it was just so well done and and yeah. they use this and they use football to communicate yeah. this this really beautiful story that right. is emotional and there were a lot of yeah. times Adam I was like wait is this a musical so much music in this movie which yeah I think really really um makes the emotional scenes just that much more emotional and it's it makes it fun all of a sudden you're like tapping singing along like it's it is just great the, the first 60 minutes of this movie just hums right along really not a spot you can get up to use the bathroom or do anything it it, it is a, a really fast moving movie that uh i enjoyed rewatching how how was your experience rewatching it it it's one of those you know there's some movies that you watch again and you're like eh I liked it at the time. It doesn't hold up or I don't want to watch this. It's kind of, you know, I've seen it. I know what happens, but this movie, I can sit and watch it from beginning to end every time. And it's funny. You bring up the music because every time I hear the song, ain't no mountain high enough by, yep. by Marvin Gaye, mm-hmm. I always think of this movie. There's mm-hmm. a couple of other songs, but that's the one that, that stands out. Well, let's talk about the soundtrack. He ain't a mountain yeah. high enough. Uh, Spirit in the sky, that dirty electric yeah. part. The yeah, right. that is super fun. They got a yeah. James Tra- uh, a James Taylor uh, fire and raindrop and a yep. really emotional part. Uh, yeah. And then the theme, right? That remember the Titans theme. I just when I hear, yeah. it, um, I just hear Jim Nansen's voice like he's talking about the Masters over it or something. Yeah, yeah. And I think Obama used it in his campaign. Like he did. And then for when he like an, as, as president. So an incredible soundtrack to this movie. It, it really is. It's I mean, it just it brings everything. The and, yeah. and the music, you know, you. I, I was never a huge music guy when I was younger. I've gotten more into music now, even mm-hmm. even though it's, it's music that's been out a while because I don't like a lot of new music. But mm-hmm. when you think about it, like music is so I, I think when you're younger, you don't realize how important the music is to a movie, to any movie, even yeah. if it's just, you know, instrumental, even if it's not like popular songs, just yeah. like if you're watching an action flick or you're watching a horror movie, whatever it is like that, you know, um, or even if it's a theme, the theme song for a for a television show, right. it it creates a mood or Agreed. it creates that the, is, you know, the TV show. Um, oh, my God. I'm drawing a blank now. Uh, black, uh, 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 white lotus, white lotus, black. Lotus, yeah, lotus. yeah, white, white lotus. lotus. Heck yeah. You know, like there's there the music in that show really makes that show even better mm-hmm. because they have done a magnificent job of creating tension, creating energy, and that's what music yep. does. Yeah, and it creates emotion, and it just does so many things to you. You know, music can also speak to the pace of a movie, or yeah, if they're like transitioning from a scene or from a place, uh, it can communicate a character's emotions. Uh, and 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 Disney does so well at this. Oh my gosh, this is yeah. just such for as hard like content and like what they're communicating. Like music really helps, I think, make it an enjoyable experience. Um, there were a couple other football movies, Adam, uh, that we could have talked about. That I just want to yeah. really quick get get your opinion on because there's a right. ton of football movies that we could have picked. Yes. I'm glad you picked your Remember the Titans. I I can't wait to share my memories. Um, I'm just going to run through a list here. Yeah, uh, I'll give you a thumbs up, thumbs down, or uh, yeah, well, yeah, because I, okay. I I made a post on my Facebook and on Twitter, like, hey, what movie do you guys think we're talking about? And we had a lot right. of people guessing. Uh, not I, I think I had one person guess. Remember the Titans? That was after they realized that no one had guessed it. Um, okay. Uh, uh, replacements, yay or nay? A uh, yay on that one. I mean, it's it's it's. At times, so super. Ch- it's so funny because Keanu Reeves 
is great and terrible at the same. Sometimes he's yes. just so bad, and sometimes he's so awesome. Well, I think the I don't movie know what knows it is what about. it is. I think that's a very self aware movie. Yes, I um, mean, I mean, to get Gene Hackman to play in such a cheese ball movie <laughs> was really good. Yeah. Uh, I I like it. I I think it's it's a really good movie. I agree. Uh, Water Boy. A Water Boy's great. I'm not. Yeah. I, I like Adam Sandler. I'm not. I don't love all his movies. And his movies in recent years have been outside. Well, his comedies in recent years have been awful. I just yeah. started that. Uh, my family and I started watching. You are so not invited to my bat mitzvah, which just came out. Okay, he's in. I family seen is it. in it. Terrible. Ten minutes in, oh, we no. shut it off. Ooh. All his comedy stink now. Like his basketball movie that he did was really good. Yeah, the Uncut Gems was really mm, good. Excellent. His comedies are all terrible now. Yeah. But if I had to pick. I mean, my favorite Adam Sandler comedy of all time, it would probably be Waterboy. Either that or um, Happy Gilmore or maybe Big Daddy. I think that's that's under the radar. A little it's bit. it's between Billy Madison, and Happy Gilmore for me. Um, yeah. That's a whole other podcast. Uh, yeah. Any but given I like, Sunday. I like Waterboy. We got to like go a little quicker because any I, given I, Sunday is overrated, in my opinion. Ooh, great right. cast. Great cast. But the football just did not do it for me in that i hated the uniforms i i don't know i thought it was super cool i haven't Everybody watched it, loves it. i'm in the minority on that one i always thought that one was it just got so much hype when it came out and i was yeah. like it's all right but yeah. I, I don't love it rudy great movie um i did know somebody that knew rudy and he said he wasn't a nice guy and that kind of spoiled it a little for oh, no. me <laughs> But, you know, he was also a walk in on the walk on on Notre Dame. So maybe he had an axe grind. I don't know. Um, but and I, you know, John Favreau in his early days in that yeah. one, Vaughn in his early days in that one. It's a really good movie. And yeah. it is. A, it, it, it's another one that you could watch every time, wherever you pick it up from. Yeah. Charles S. Dutton <laughs> in that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, draft day. Awful. That's Awful. horrible. Awful. Uh, the only reason people liked some people liked it is because it was about the Browns. It, yeah. Kevin Costner is the, uh, the only bad sports movie he ever made. Well, the did movie he try? Is, I don't know. I mean, that movie, that movie was a piece of trash. The <laughs> trades were completely unrealistic. I mean, the whole yeah. thing was stupid. Like um, oh, all of a sudden we're doing our research the day of the draft. It's, it's, it's yeah, absurd. It's, someone it was terrible. Did, uh, someone did a, a Google Maps of all, all the route he drove the day of like in the movie he's like driving yeah. in his car different places there's like there's right. no way he could have gone all over cleveland like he would have gone to all these different places it was really funny to see that mapped out like that would have worked um yeah the right. movie sucked though that was, uh, that was I, the I worst have, i mean i'm just gonna we might have to do yeah. yay or nay um okay this one's been in the zeitgeist blindside <laughs> well i still love it i obviously when you find out it how you know and i don't know that remember the titans was perfectly accurate either Oh, but, we'll get to that. I looked into yeah, that. Right. Do you know yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the true story? What part? Like I remember the Titans. That he was kind of a jerk. Well, about the, the coach. We'll we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about All right, maybe there's something about. I don't remember or I, I don't know. But uh I, I can't let that affect yeah. ultimately how good and it's a great movie. It's it's a great movie. Uh Little Giants. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> no, Little fun. Giants is fantastic. That um, that's it's an all-time football movie, one of my favorites. We are Marshall. Oh, that's it. I mean, that is that's probably the most underrated football movie ever. I, I, think I feel like people don't say. talk about it a lot. Obviously, McConaughey was great in there. Mm -hmm. Um, who's the other guy? The guy from the Lost, movie? Matthew. Um, right. I wasn't a lost guy, but uh Matthew yeah. West? That's not his I don't name, know. Is it? But he was remember. awesome in that. Matthew Fox. Matthew Fox. I feel like uh, he does Home Depot commercials now. Though, doesn't <laughs> yeah, he? he looks he looks very bland. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but uh, that was that was a great. And then what's his name from uh, getting anybody's name now? The guy who plays uh, the the Falcon is the, one of the football players. That's right. Oh, Anthony Mackie. Yeah. Anthony Mackie. Um, right. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I he think was great. A, he was great in that. It's an underrated movie and an underrated story. I don't know if people know that story as well. I much did as, not. I'll be honest. Before story. like. Until that movie was coming out, I did mm -hmm. not know about that. Yeah. Until that. My my dad, my sister, my aunt all graduated from Marshall. My dad, I th yeah. think I don't I don't I don't want to say he was at school when that happened. I don't he yeah. might have been. I don't know. But I, I went to Marshall for a year. I was right. on campus while they filmed that movie. Oh, so wow. on the Conhe around. It was a lot of fun. That's um, crazy. But Great that's movie. longest yeah. yard. I know how you feel about Adam Sandler. Which one? <laughs> right uh I, I actually like 
the Adam Sandler one, but the original longest yard with Burt. So Burt Reynolds is in the Adam Sandler one playing the older guy Mm -hmm. in the original. Did you see the original one? Yes. So the original one, for those who don't know, Burt Reynolds plays the character that Adam Sandler plays. Little slow. Little slow. (laughs) I liked it, though, better. I thought the cast of like the cast, the the surrounding cast of characters. There were some weak characters, I thought, in the newer one. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like them both though. In the end, yeah. Okay, Chris here, Rock was one. great in the, the the newer one. Here's one that maybe not a lot of people know: Wildcats with Goldie Hawn. You know that great. one? Under the radar too. She yeah. was uh, the football scenes were terrible, <laughs> awful. But by the way, that I think that was the first movie that Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson were in together because they were in a bunch of movies together. That's right. But they were but two of the football players were Wesley Snipes and and Woody Harrelson. And that is uh, so true. Goldie Hawn was great. You know, mm-hmm. in that movie, and uh, Nipsey Russell played yeah. the principal. He was hilarious. That's a that's a really really underrated movie. But the football yeah. scenes were really not well done. But yeah. it was a good movie. Varsity Blues. Good. That like that was one that I loved when I first saw it. But mm-hmm. seeing it back, I think it's it's not stood up well to the test of time. See, I feel like that isn't self-aware of what it is. Whereas replacements doesn't right. take itself like Varsity Blues is taking stuff way too seriously. Yeah, like, it's like He's, super cheesy. <laughs> yeah, James it's James Vanderbeek, right? Yeah, man, yeah. not a fan. John Voight was good as the coach in that, but mm. yeah, Invincible. That's a great one. That's one that doesn't get talked about a lot either. Mark Wahlberg was excellent. That Vince Papali role, it it yeah. was it was well done. I like um uh, uh what's his name. The guy played the coach. Uh, you know, I only saw it. Uh, I don't even know if uh, I've, I've watched that one, actually. So Greg, Greg no Kinnear. Greg Kinnear. Me. Okay. Greg Kinnear plays the coach. Yeah. Yep. Um, but it was good. That's a good movie. Well, I, I think because I'm more partial to this one, the garbage yeah. picking, field goal kicking Philadelphia phenomenon with Tony Danza. Did you ever see that one? <laughs> I have never seen that one. That's the first story. one you mentioned. That's it's the, the same first story. one you mentioned. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I, um, that's the first one you mentioned I've never seen. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Maguire. I got three more here. Uh, again, that's a football it, movie, right? That's a football movie. Yes, it okay. is good. Uh, Jay Moore, who plays the agent that fired him, you know, Jay Moore. Yeah, yeah. I actually met Jay Moore. Jay Moore was best friends with one of my college roommates when I was 18. Oh, cool. And I got to a fight with his best friend once. <laughs> and he used to come to our dorm room and do stand up for us in the dorms. And I never thought he was funny. And this was be- before he became famous. Mm-hmm. But I actually find him funny in that movie. It's a, It's a really good movie. It all the the love story in that movie now falls flat to me, and I'm not interested in it at all. I find her completely annoying. I think both. I don't think there's any chemistry between the two. No, Tom Cruise not and Renee Zellweger. No. Um, but I think they're perfect for each other because of that reason. Like, just yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I, um, it, Brian it Song. doesn't. That to me doesn't hold up as well. Brian Song, yeah. believe it or not, I have not seen. It, I haven't I either. Believe that. That's yep. crazy. Um, and then radio, the last one. There's others that I haven't listed. It's funny but... that you bring up radio because I just actually recently watched it again. That mm-hmm. of all these movies, it's the one I've most recently watched. Love that movie. Yeah. Saw um, in theaters. Um that's Ed Harris, Harris, right? Just great. Yeah. Ed Harris yeah. is, and yeah. and um Cuba Gooding Jr. He was yep. great playing yep. radio. It's a great yep. movie. Yep. Yeah, that's a great movie. But you picked Remember the Titans, one of your yes. favorite movies, Adam. Why? Yeah. Why do you remember the Titans? One of your favorite movies. Do you, do you remember much around about the year two thousand? Whenever it, it came into your life. Well, two thousand. I you know I had dropped out of college and then I went back to school in ninety six. So I graduated college that year. My career started. Uh, my career started in ninety nine technically, but it, it was like the beginning of my career, and I love it. It had what I love. I love Denzel Washington. I love football. And I love um, a story of people coming together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in a time now where there's so much anger and so much dissension between so many people, it's nice. You know, it, it, it was it was heartwarming in that even though who knows what the truth was, Mm -hmm. uh, but it was heartwarming to see, like, here's two guys that grew up hating each other especially how white people in especially that part of the country grew up hating black people. And it was just insane. It was always insane to me. Cause like, yeah, I grew up in, in, in New York city. It was a melting pot. I knew people of all races and religions. It never would have occurred to me as a kid to 
not like someone because of their race or or for any reason beyond that guy's a a jerk. So I don't want to I don't like him. Yeah. But to judge someone for th- for that, it just I I never got that. So once I grew up and moved out of New York and realized, well, there's a lot of that in this world even now. Yeah. You know, it, it makes you so sad to think about that. So when you see the story about a white guy who grew up in with all this racism and all this hatred. And when he actually took the time to get to know somebody of a different race, he realized, Hey, you're just like me, Yeah, you know, whatever. And, and if more of us took the time to get to know other people, instead of being scared or being bigoted, mm-hmm. then maybe we'd have more of that in the world. You know, Gary Bertier's in the hospital bed. Uh, yeah. By the way, we're talking about spoilers, 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 spoilers. If you haven't yeah, seen I mean, it's been the 23 Titans, years, I mean, come on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, he's on the hospital bed. He's paralyzed. And he says, Julius, I was scared of you, man. I just didn't know. Yeah. Um, right. And I think at, at the center, at the center of racism, I think there is a lot of fear. <laughs> um, of course. But uh, yeah, I was, you know, I don't want you to laugh too hard at this. I was 13 in the year 2000. So I was not yeah. <laughs> in college. I was in middle school and um, just a, a uh, loved sports movies. I mean, this had the perfect mid sports. It had yeah. awesome speeches and like get you pumped. It had two or three scenes oh, yeah. where the team gets all get together. Um, right, it had right, a, right. a story of like best friendship, right? Gary and yeah. Julius became really good friends. Um, and so it was like me and my best friend, we loved, love, love this movie. Right. Um, and, and I, you know, look, when I put this in again, I watched, I didn't put it in, I streamed it. Um, it said 1971. I was like, man, that when this was released was in 2000, the, it wasn't that yeah. long ago. I know. 71 is the year I was born, by the way. Um, uh, and, and so that right away was like, yeah. oh, my gosh. Um, and and what I realized watching this was this. Whenever I was in school growing up, we we learned about um, Jim Crow laws and segregation and racism and prejudice um, and Martin Luther King and all of that. But it was just books and it was just th- things that we learned. Right. And it, I didn't. I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood. I wasn't, I just wasn't in my face that that prejudice still existed, that this is what life was like for people that were different right. than me. Um, yeah. And so when I watched this movie and realized that that like seeing it being play out happened, like I knew that it happened, yeah. it was kind of like eye opening and yeah. it was uncomfortable and it just didn't make sense. This is one of my first like honest, I can remember experiences that wait, people treated like actually this act like. You read right. it, like I said, it's in school. Yeah. But to, to see well, it in this art, as art, yeah. I guess it was like my first experience with art that. Yeah. This well, that scene where where the quarterback takes those guys into the restaurant. Yeah. And he, you know, the quarterback is, you know, he's not from there. He's from California. Mm-hmm. So he didn't grow up maybe with racism. They're probably it was probably more mute, muted racism, you yeah. know, in California. There was I'm sure obviously it was still there. Right. Uh, and he takes these guys and the, the people in the restaurant are staring at them. It's like, you guys can go out, you know, get food from the back. And it's like, oh, that was what's happening. Like that. Yeah. It's just insane. Uh, so, so I think this movie did a really great job of showing people what prejudice looks like. I, I think it's skirted. And that scene about the diner is great about privilege. Right. Privilege is, is really hard oh, yeah. to uh, it's not as black and white as maybe showing what prejudice is. Right. Privilege right. Is, is super internal and yeah. um and and so i think what we saw there with with sunshine right was he didn't know his privilege um right and and i think still right. people today still people will oh, say sure. that they're, they're not racist or prejudiced but they aren't they haven't come to terms with their privilege yet and i'm, I'm not trying to get in a soapbox i'm not trying to like no but a it's podcast true. for that discussion but yeah i think people understand oh if I don't do this, then I'm not racist. Or if if I don't believe this, then I'm not prejudiced. But they haven't come to terms with their privilege. And right. um, just in my own journey, that uh, honestly, the, just just in the past, you know, seven to ten years, that where I've yeah fully like, and it's it's still I'm, I'm always learning as about that as well. Um, I think we all are, if, yeah. right? I mean, I, I just had really in the last month we were having a debate on the show, on the TV show about something that about the Sean Watson and and part of the conversation was race related. And I, you know, think of myself, you know, as the most open minded, you know, liberal progressive person you could ever meet. Mm -hmm. Um, And yet I got an email after this conversation Mm -hmm. 
uh, about Deshaun Watson, and it was from a, a black woman who said, I don't want to get into all the details, but it was just a fascinating email, and it made me think of, it was basically like, okay, you know, because I've been like, I'm fine with Watson, I'm fine with Watson, but I can't believe that 26 women, whatever, made up all story. It's impossible for me to believe. But she she brought a perspective that I hadn't really been able to think about was black people have been railroaded so often in the court system, in the legal system, mm -hmm. by the government that you can't blame people for thinking maybe there's some, even if it's not every one of the people, that maybe to some degree they're so like, you got to understand why people may believe that this could be, it may not sound realistic to you, but yeah. here's why it may make sense for people that believe, believe this. Yeah. And even as, as someone again, who's, I, you know, open-minded to everything. And I, I just, it was like, it was like, wow, that's a perspective that I, how could I understand that perspective? Yeah. No matter how open-minded, no matter how much I think I can feel somebody else's pain or, how crappy people can be to other people. I didn't live. I haven't had to live that. Right. And so it was an interesting perspective. And yeah, and that getting back to the movie is mm -hmm. kind of what he found because sunshine was, yep. he didn't care about your race. He didn't like, he Louis might Lastic have been didn't care about your race either. Yeah. Louis Lastic, Right. Cause he came yeah. from New Jersey where it's, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, it, but they didn't get it. Because yeah. even though they didn't care, right? They just assumed it's no big deal. Why would anybody care? Until you know, right? Yeah. I didn't. As a kid, I didn't know people were racist, and and I think back and I'm like, there were probably things that people I knew, family members, might have said in my, you know, when I was a kid, that yeah. might have been racist, and I didn't even realize it at the time or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Anyway, so a, a, it was an eye opening experience for 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 you, as you said, for me. Yep. And for these characters in this situation, and yeah, changed and, them just like it's changed us. Yes, and it's not the most perfect movie about race, but for no, no. a Disney film to yeah. to speak to families, I you know I don't know yeah. what more you could ask for. Uh, so, uh, Letterbox, uh, are you familiar with the app Letterbox, Adam? I've heard of it, but I've never used it. It's, a, it's an app website that people can log on and rate movies uh, yeah. on a one through five star scale. It's a 3.7 on Letterbox. Rotten Tomatoes, remember the Titans, is 72%, 93% chance, uh, percent audience score. IMDb, 7.8 stars. It was budgeted $3 million. It made $136 million. Oh, my Denzel, God. man. Denzel. Yeah. Um, and the power of, of, of the yeah. mouse. Um, hey, I, I want to share. I did a little Wikipedia search about the movie, Adam. Yeah. And... Uh, I'm a sucker for based on a true story. I love it. I yeah. love the credits. Where are they now? I love it. <laughs> give, give yeah, me I love that, movie. which it's they so did at the fun. end of that movie. Yeah, for a few <laughs> of the So much fun. Yeah. Um, I want to share with you what actually happened in the real season of Remember the Titans in the movie embellished yeah. and did Hollywood things. Actually, the team blew out every team in the season. Oh, really? It wasn't even close. Uh, they came from behind in one game, and that was in the middle of the season. Nine of their wins were shutouts. The state championship game was a blowout. wasn't even close. Yeah. No, the, the state championship <laughs> right. game did not happen. Yeah, but <laughs> like, that would have been boring to have in the movie. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Um, every other school in the district had already been integrated. So whenever they said that no other school has to deal with race, that was because they all have already dealt with integration. Their school was the only one at the time going through integration, but all the other schools integrated. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So why were they so good then? Uh, I don't know. They would just happen to be, you know, um, whatever. this is a big one. This one shocked yeah. me. Gary Brettier's accident happened after the season. Oh, not during the season. It, he was leaving a team celebration banquet when it happened. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. By the way, the actor who plays Gary Bertier, Ryan Hurst, was a key character in Sons of Anarchy, which is yes. one of my favorite shows. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, um, there's ahead. a lot of people that wanted to do awesome things that at the time yeah. people didn't know about. Um, so yeah, that happened after the, <laughs> they, wow. he, he played the championship game totally. Um, in uh, in real life, they didn't throw a brick through, um, coach Boone's window. They threw a toilet, yeah. a toilet, toilet. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and the final one, the inspirational run and the inspirational consequent speech at Gettysburg did not happen either. 
Did that. Were they even at Gettysburg? They took a tour. Yeah, but they didn't do the. Um, uh, okay. But what a boring movie. Yeah, I know. Do we? What does it boring... say anything about what Julius and and uh, Gary's relationship really was? Like, did that really? Is that true? Like, did they become it close? No, it, it, as far as I know, that that was true that they were yeah. friends. But it it, it was yeah. just kind of like those points that they were like. Right. They, they talked about um, Coach Yost's family a little bit. I think he had four daughters instead of just one. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. But uh, nothing about Julius and Gary. Um, yeah, you know, Adam, for a moment, this is, I, I thought, remember the monologue, Denzel Washington cooks in this movie and just kills every single speech, monologue, whatever he's giving. It is right, right, right. a tour de force. And I don't know of any other actor that could have played his role, I, I, like any other. I can't um, imagine anybody playing that role. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you think through, the, I mean, Samuel L. Jackson. Um, couldn't I don't think be as empathetic uh, as no and Samuel Denzel. Jackson was great in Coach uh, Carter I think right Coach Carter right yeah yeah, yeah. as uh, a coach there but a totally different type of coach yeah yeah um and so he he just crushed it and yeah. I think is a big reason for success uh, no one else could have done what he'd done um all right what were some of your favorite scenes well um I I love when the co you know when the um what's his name coach yost uh -huh. realizes all right you know i i'm not you know i i need to get fully on board too and he's yeah and when he says to coach boone with that when they're playing that racist team he's like let's let's pour it on you know yeah i can't remember the exact line he says mm -hmm. but when he's like let, don't i don't want to and then he's you, then he's talking to the guys on defense. I don't want to see them gain another yard. Blitz all night. It's like everybody comes together. I'm taking yeah. you out, and that I'm like screaming watching the TV. Heck yeah, scene. man. Yeah, Coach Yost, uh, Will Patton, right? Yeah, Will, Will Patton, assistant coach here. Um, I, I you know, has to most find recently this in silo. By the way, most recently in silo. I don't know yeah. if you've seen that. Yep, I haven't yeah. seen silo. No. Yeah. Um, has to find this balance of, you know, hey, Denzel is clearly the number one guy, but I, yeah. I think he knows his role. He he does what he's supposed to. He gives looks like he should. And yeah. um, he has this one speech where you're right there. I, I think it is the semifinal game where the refs are cooking them and they have it all like playing like the refs are obviously trying to get the, the team to lose. And um, yeah. in the movie, it costs Coach Yost the high school uh, hall of fame and he calls the refs out and he gets the defense yeah. together and he's like you're gonna blitz all night make sure they remember the night they play the titans like he right, like right, says right, the yeah. title in that speech is it is very yeah, inspirational yeah. there were a handful of times adam that i was like screaming i know watching it when i was 13 or even now i was like oh, let's go um, the like the scene whole, yeah mm -hmm. the scene where uh they all visit gary in the hospital Oh my gosh! Yeah, is a good one. Yeah, um, yeah, I love that. You're trying to talk football, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm hurt, coach. I ain't dead." <laughs> right. <laughs> I love really the cool. scene where Louis Lastic finds Denzel, Denzel, Coach Boone, and says, uh, oh "I'm eligible, gosh. coach." And yeah, then he, you know, and he hugs him. I think yeah, that's, that's before cool the the state championship. He's eligible. Right, right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I. Uh, there's so many good scenes in that. So movie, many good man. scenes. I want to. Yeah. Um, gosh, I, I love whenever you're meeting the characters uh of the black school and um and so you have uh you get to meet julius and then um rev and blue yep all, all the guys you got uh donald Faison who pays pd just super yeah, fun right. everyone is as a character it's just a lot of fun yeah. and then in comes denzel right and pd's right. got this big grin and yeah. he's like why are you smiling he's like well, i love football he's like football's fun and it makes me like wonder he's like yeah oh zero fun sir it's just just a fun <laughs> right. like to watch it you're like oh coach yeah. put him in his place this is yeah. the coach coach for sure yeah. um it's just so many speeches and monologues like that was another thing that stuck out adam as i was watching this again i was like man like does that doesn't just have one or two lines they're like paragraphs for the first 60 minutes, he's given speeches, whether it's to Coach Yost, whether it's to the yeah. coaches or the team or the player. Like, it's just like monologue after Den monologue. And he crushes yeah, it. Yeah, every Denzel speech is great. Certainly the one at, at Virginia. Oh, yeah. Uh, which yeah. you said was made up. Um, We're fighting the same fight today. Yeah. Very Also emotional. the speech when. Um, now I can't, oh, when Julius talks about, you know, you know, I'm not perfect. None of us are. But this team is perfect. Yeah. You know. We've won every game we've played so far, and it's okay with you, Co you know. Uh, yeah, 
that's how we want to end it. That was that was really good. Yeah, that's the cha- state championship game. Uh, Julius yeah. has a couple awesome lines. Another yeah. one where he's like attitude reflect leadership, right? Where right, he and yeah, Gary yeah. after the Gettysburg, like we got to figure this out. And Gary's like, you never uh, when you when you go blitz all out, you leave your team behind. And it leaves everyone stranded. And that's he's right. like, well, I'm going to get mine if you don't block for you know, Rev at quarterback. And they have this exchange, and it's just yeah. we use that quote. In sports all the time. We still sure. do. My friend and I do. Attitude of like leadership. 100%. And then it leads to uh, Gary, uh, Gary, you know, chewing out his white friend on offense for not blocking. Right. Which, yes. The strong side, left side. Right, right, right. Which is you a good to- emotional moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I just got chills thinking about it. Yeah. Um, and then and it- that's what a lot of the other players are like. OK, maybe we can be friends, you know? Yeah. Like those guys led the way. Yeah. Yeah. Two more scenes um, back in the hospital before the whole team comes, like the night of Gary's wreck. Yeah. Jess comes in and she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Only family can come see. Yeah. Uh, and Gary mumbles, hey, can't you see the resemblance? We are brothers or something. Yeah, He's right. Like, We're brothers. Can't you see the resemblance, yeah. which is really cool. Um, yeah. And then another, I don't know if we've quoted attitude reflects leadership more or this play call, the, the final play of the game that wins in the championship, a fake 23 dive with the backside Georgia verse. Like your life depended on it. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I think like one of my it. friends signed my, my yearbook with that quote, actually <laughs> just super Good. fun, super yeah. fun quotes. Um, yeah. Gosh, very it, quotable it's, movie. It's great. Any other scenes we're missing out on? Um, Oh, they look like grown men. They do not look like high school students. No, oh, not gosh, at that's all. another thing. These look yeah. like grown ass men. Especially like remember that scene where they're in the hallway and there's almost a fight, like when they first go to school. Yeah, and uh, yeah, some of those guys look like they could be thirty more than. Oh 18. my gosh! And they they clear out because they're like, if if there's a fight, they're going to shut the whole school season down. Like right, they're just right, going to stop yeah, it. Yeah. So there starts yeah. to be a scuffle, and then all of a sudden it's Julius and Gary breaking it up, and they're the ones that are left. And it's a really right, cool because right. they had just got into a fight. Yeah. Um, before then, um, all right. What what would you say to be a theme of the movie? What what's what's Disney trying to hammer home here, Adam? Um, I mean the obvious. I, I guess love your fellow man, right? Yeah. Um, coming together mm-hmm. would be the number one thing. Yeah, um, I think That's everyone I has it. something to teach us too, right? Like right, whether it's uh, a, a kid. I I, I love the uh, Coach Boone and the relationship he has with Coach Yost's daughter. Right, like, right, we're right. talking football, like on the fridge, right. freezer part. Yes, everyone yeah. has something to teach us. The enemies, people we hate, everyone has something to right. teach us. You got to come together and love your fellow man. Um, which, yeah. What, what a good theme. What what a good yes, theme. Yes, absolutely. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to go over the grades for Remember the Titans. Adam the Bull right here on the Fanfare Podcast and the Press Play Podcast Network. We'll be right back. Hey, this is JD from the Hyman Podcast, a place to have hard conversations revolving around the overall human experience. We tackle topics such as racism, the American justice system, and even headlining news such as the Alex Murdoch saga. This season, we're gonna continue to tackle more hard hitting topics, and I'm excited to take you on that journey. The Hyman Podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. The Hyman Podcast is produced in conjunction with the Hyman brand and is part of the Press Play Podcast Network. What's up, everyone? Chase Smith here, host of the Chase Smith Podcast, and my podcast reflects who I am. My hobbies, my interests, my passions, my curiosities, my careers, my questions, and my family. I'll spend time talking about all types of sports, movies, TV shows, trending news stories, and other cultural events, and even faith. This is who I am, and I hope I can get to know you as well. Join me on the Chase Smith Podcast, and let's have some thought-provoking conversations only on the Press Play Podcast Network. Welcome, everyone, to Podcast 616, the official podcast of Earth 616. I am your host, Damon Royster, and I am inviting you to listen and subscribe to this Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast. On Podcast 616, we gather some of today's greatest comedians, writers, and actors to dive deep into all things Marvel, like comic book history and lore, all the interconnected superhero storylines, and of course, who's hot and who's not in the MCU. Honestly, why aren't you listening right now? You have the power to listen to Podcast 616. And as we always say, with great power comes even greater responsibility. Listen and subscribe to Podcast 616 wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, 
Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. Hey everyone, this is Don Mike Mendoza, the host of Producing While Asian. Join us in season two for more conversations with actors, artists, producers, and more from Broadway, Hollywood, and beyond every other Wednesday on the Press Play Podcast Network. We are excited to announce that we are joining the Press Play Podcast Network. The Krypton Report podcast is dedicated to all things Superman, Supergirl, and the planet Krypton. We discuss movies, TV, game, comics, and all things DC. So join me, Tyler, with my co-host James and Jania. So join us as we explore DC's multiverse. Look for Krypton Report on all social media platforms. All right, we are back. Adam the Bull, Chase Smith here. Remember the Titans! The Fanfare Podcast. Adam, we have eight categories here to to go over some grades. Just like a school report card, uh, the categories are as follows. Acting, where we look at the performance of the main character and the supporting cast. The star power, we're going off name recognition of the actors and actresses and the previous work. Uh, Cinematography, storytelling without words. Audio, sound design and score. Costume design, screenwriting, directing, movie poster, and overall grade. Adam, let's go with you first. What grade would you give this for acting? I would give it an A. An A. Without a doubt. I mean, or an A plus even. Um, Denzel's fantastic. You know, um, the guy who played Gary Bertier, Ryan Hurst, and mm-hmm. the guy who played Julius is what Wood is his last name. I can't, I'm drawing a blank on his first name. Yeah. He um, was it's, he was yeah. Avon Barksdale in The Wire. Wood Harris, yeah. Wood mm-hmm. Harris, right. Wood is his yep. first name. That's right. Uh I mean, just all and and the entire supporting cast was very strong. There's nobody in that movie that I'm like, yeah, that guy wasn't very good. Like the even like small roles, like Gary's girlfriend, yeah, Kate Bosworth was good, and his mom played that role well. And yeah. the racist guy in the restaurant, like he looked like a racist guy in in a restaurant, yeah. in 1971 in Virginia. Uh, it all it all kind of hit. You know what? You convinced me. I had it as a B. Um, yeah. But Denzel was so strong and everyone was just, it, it was great. It was great. I don't, uh, I, I I had to be, I have it now in A, Adam. You convinced me. All right. I talked you into it. I like that. You did. You did. Um, I, I'm going to go here. The next category, star power, name recognition in previous work. Um, you know, I, I think now looking back, it's a very impressive. Yeah. Cast. At the t- at the time, it's still a B because, like, there was at the time nobody was big except for Denzel. Mm-hmm. So I think that's enough to get it to a B. The rest of the cast, I don't think anybody else was that big at the time that I can think of. You, uh, I, I think people had seen Patton and some stuff, but now you look through and you recognize. And then Ryan Gosling just as like seventh, eighth build, right? <laughs> Ryan Go- oh. Gosling's in this movie. He is. He's a corner. Yeah, he's the one that uh, he he's pulled and he and coach. Oh, that guy! Him. I didn't even real. I did not know to this until you just told me. I did not realize that was Ryan Gosling. Yeah, yeah, that's Ryan Gosling. Now that you say it, I'm like, oh god, yeah, that was him. I didn't realize that. Yeah, there's a scene where he, the, when they're rooming together, he sings this country yeah. song. Put you right. in the movies. He's like, I'm not going to say it, but. I got to say it, right? He's this really like country, like oh country my bumpkin. God. Yeah, Gosling, uh, Ryan Gosling. Oh um, you know, so I, I think then people weren't super, but now, I mean, even Donald Faison on Scrubs, right? Yeah, Just, that's true. Um, yeah. Awesome stuff. Uh, uh, Louis Lastic, he had a run on. Um, uh, my name is Earl. My name is Earl. That's right. Yep. And so I think now you're looking back, man, what an awesome cast. I'm going to give it a C just because it's Denzel and a bunch of, it's almost like the Braun when they played the Spurs in the finals right. in, the, in that lockout season, Denzel's doing <laughs> like everything. Um, and then there's just a bunch of other people who are doing their best, but pretty unknown at right. the time. Yeah. At the time. Definitely. So I'm going to go see. Um, all right. Cinematography, storytelling without words. Where do you do a cinematography here, Adam? Uh, yeah, I, I probably should have written that down. And I knew you were going to ask me that. And I was like, 
I don't need to write it down in advance. Cinematography. Uh, I'll say uh, B minus. Mm-hmm. It was yeah, adequate, right. but not amazing. Yeah, I give it a B. I think if I watch this movie on mute, I would still pretty, you know, get an idea of what's going on. Um, but, uh, you know, I, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'll give it a B. I think sports, okay. you don't, you don't need much, um, with sports. Now, I don't think the football scenes were the best filmed football scenes. I think they were okay. Yeah. Um, there are other better pure football movies, Definitely. obviously. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll give it a B. All right. Audio. Woo. Does sound, sound design and score. I'm, I'm going a, a plus a plus. plus. I mean, this, yeah, this it's, is it's perfect. One of the best uh, soundtracks that we still yeah. hear influence today. Um, costume design. Where are you at here, Adam? Uh, B. Fine. Nothing. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it looked, you know, it felt like you were in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. But nothing that overly stood out, but not bad or good. I think it was good. Yeah, the football jerseys were bland. I think most of them yeah. were in that time. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that you see them in school and it looks like they're in the 70s. Uh, right. Even the, the, the sunshine. You know, people who weren't from that area, you can they look like they weren't from that area, right? Sunshine, California right. got the hair. Yes. Um yes. Louis Elastic, uh, you yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah, I think they did a good job. Solid job there. Yeah. Screenwriting. Um whew, I, I some of these monologues, I mean I, I would say an A on screenwriting. On. Yeah. I mean the the dialogue really made the movie. It, it well, did. the music made the movie, but the but the dialogue was great. I it, I, I I give it an A. You know, and, and as as authentic as you know, Adam, we're, we're pretty big sports fans. We know sports. We've yeah. been a part of sports our whole life. For th- this movie to get both of us fired up to to run yeah, through a right, brick right. wall, that's all yeah. writing. That's all writing. That's true. Um, and yeah, there were multiple that doesn't happen times, with every sports movie. Multiple times where they had to bring the team together and re rally or yes. get everyone re fired up, and they did it like three or four times. And every time, I was like. Oh, let's go. Oh, yeah. Every time yeah, they no did doubt. it effectively. Um, they were and, and it was multiple people that get, you know, obviously mm-hmm. Denzel, yep. uh, Will Paxton, yep. uh, or Patton. Like, Patton, yep, that yep. Right? Patton, yeah. Yeah, Patton, yeah. Uh, and then Julius and, and Gary both had speeches at different yeah. times. Yep. And they all it all worked. Yes. Yeah. It, it all did. worked. Yeah. Um movie uh directing. I, I went ahead. Directing. You know, uh I had not heard of this Boaz y- Yakin. Yeah, I don't know. Who else what else has he done? Uh I just clicked here. Director. All right. Director. Um, I mean Uptown Girls, remember the Titans? Uh not he's transitioned more to uh director to, to writing and producing, <laughs> not so much directing. Okay. Um, so this would be obviously his probably best movie. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I I'd say he did a very good job. I mean, A, I'd give him an A. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think it's hard to you know knock him just because he's he's unknown. Um, yeah, right. I think the movie's pretty well paced. Like I said, it doesn't stop for like the first. You're just like this is so entertaining. Um. And uh, you know, I I don't know how how much Disney kind of like made him do certain things or what is. Uh, you know, freedom wasn't. I think Berkheimer was a producer on this one, I believe. Oh, okay. Um, and so, so yeah, I don't know if he, you know, directed a lot behind the scenes. I'm just not sure. Um, I, I I'm gonna go with a B, just because I would feel weird giving it a day from someone I don't know. Doesn't mean he wasn't well. It's just I, I don't feel right giving it an a i don't know it just feels weird uh, but i do feel right adam about giving this yes movie poster an a because whoo, definitely what an awesome movie poster just denzel's face you know they got this gold hue looking this inspirational right. coaching pose and running out the tunnel what an awesome movie poster do you like movie it certainly posters? was do you like a good movie poster? i do and he was great and that uh, that was a great one this i i feel like the movie poster and encapsulates the entire movie right here i mean it doesn't I'm not about the race but just like inspirational football denzel washington it's just his name on the top denzel washington yeah. that's all it is that's, that's really right. all you need to know about this by the movie. way i feel like i feel like i now have to look up how old all these guys were when the movie came out yeah yeah so so ryan hurst uh was 24 when the movie came out that's gary bertier okay wood harris who played julius campbell was 31 when the movie came out. 
Well, maybe 30. He was 30. He turned 31 that year. Yeah. Ryan Gosling, who I obviously had no clue until just now. Gosling was he was 20, so not too bad. Okay. Uh he looks 20. Louis, the, guy, the guy who played Louis Elastic was 24. That's not bad. So those and the guy who played uh Sunshine, yeah, was 25. Okay. Yeah, Gosling so no, looks the, the youngest, youngest was 24, I think. No, no, Gosling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, the girl who played uh, Cheryl Yost. Hayden oh, Pant- Hayden P- Pantier. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like her first. She was 11. Yes. The movie came out. Yeah. Now, when they filmed the movie, those people were all probably a year or two younger. Right. But still. Yeah. Um, all right. So here we're going to add up all these scores here. Uh, right. I-, I gave Remember the Titans 1C. Two B's and four A's. Uh, Adam gave. Uh, remember the Titans. Three B's and five A's. My my. I'm score, a high grader. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. My score came out yeah. a three point oh, and you gave Remember the Titans a three point six two five. There we go, Adam. That's yeah. a pretty good grade for Remember the Titans. It is. I. It's. It's definitely up there. By the way, I got before we wrap up. I got to hit you with six football movies we have not mentioned. Okay. In this podcast, that every football fan should see. If you oh, haven't man. already. And I haven't meant. Can I try to guess a couple? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, um, I don't even know if I could guess any. Well, who, who's in one of them? Th- let's do that. Give me an actor or an actress. Actually, there's seven. Uh, one of them you might not think of as uh, a football movie, but it is. Okay. Uh, uh, one of them is stars The Rock. Oh, uh I feel like it's a newer one. Um, I don't remember the name of it. Oh my gosh. Gridiron Gang. That's it's right. It's all also based on a true story in which he starts a football program in a prison, in a kid's prison, you know, like a, in, you know, my in, brain uh, was telling me a, it was like longest yard vibes, but I, I was like, they didn't do a third one, so I didn't say it. No, no, no. Yeah, but it was it's based on a true story. Cool. Uh it was it was a great movie. Uh this one's a lot older. It stars Scott Pacula as one of the stars. Yeah, I'm not going to guess it. <laughs> Necessary roughness. I had that on my list. I skipped it because I yeah. wasn't sure. I didn't know anything about it. Um, I love it. it. It's it. It's it was like an older version of the program in a way, but it takes place in college. Okay. And Scott Bakula plays like a 40 year old quarterback who went back to college. Got talking to going back to college to play. Um. Next one is about the results of football more than football itself, but uh, stars Will Smith. Uh, football movie, uh, the results of starring Will Smith. Yeah. What year did it come out? Uh, sometime in the last 10, 12 years, I think. I feel like I should know this. Concussion. Oh. Huh. Did you ever see that? I don't think I did. I mean, it's it's about, you know, the concussion yeah. epidemic in football. Um, Interesting. The original Friday Night Lights, the movie. Mm-hmm. Which was way better than the TV show. Yeah, the movie was great. The program. Did you ever see the program? I haven't. No. That stars. Um... Oh, God, it's gonna kill me. I in, I've interviewed the guy and I and I'm drawing a blank. Starring. Uh, it doesn't have great reviews. It's kind of cheesy in a way and kind of like blue chips of football. Uh, yeah. But James Con and Halle Berry's in it. Uh, and she's one of my all-time favorites. She's gorgeous. She just had a. She was just in the news as well. Her and her husband's divorce is final. She has to pay like yes, an insane amount of money every month to her estranged husband. That's ridiculous. Bleep her, bleep her husband. What an idiot. Um, uh, some then, people. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> two of my favorite school ties. Did you ever see that? No, I haven't. I'm sorry. Brendan Fraser. Okay, that's a great one. And the Express. One of my all-time favorites, the Ernie Davis story about going to Syracuse. And eventually he was drafted by the Browns, but he died before mm. he ever played for the Browns. But uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with movie. those. Another one based on the truth. Those are all great movies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the program's not great, but it's it's <laughs> but it, and it's also dated. So probably not. But definitely School Ties, The Express. And Gridiron Gang, I'd watch those three, certainly. Yeah. Um, well, Adam, this anyway. has been a great movie podcast. Thank, thank you. you so much thank for joining the you. fanfare. I love talking yeah. uh, movies and sports with you, and we got to do it both at the same time. So this has just been great. Thanks, Chase. Anytime.
Uh, when uh, I know we talked about the, at the jump, but tell us where uh, we can find you online again. You can see me on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show on YouTube weekdays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show on YouTube. You can listen to my podcast or watch my podcast on YouTube now. Uh, subscribe, please, there to the bullpen with Adam the Bull. And, uh, of course, my television podcast, my latest episode, will be out at the by the end of this week. Up next with Adam the Bull right here on Press Play right. Pod. So there you go. Thank you Plus all so I'm much. On Cameo. Yeah, man. I could be hired to uh, to do uh, whatever. Sing happy, would you right sing price, happy birthday to someone? Sing happy birthday yeah, on Cameo. <laughs> it's sing I happy just, birthday to someone on Cameo. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I I just got two Cameo requests this morning. Awesome. I think. Let's see. One's one's to tell. One's for a guy who wants me to tell his dad and his brother that they suck at fantasy football. Yes. And one's and one is for uh, a birthday. So. That is I'll be awesome. recording those next. <laughs> that is amazing. Well, hey, JD is going to be uh, with you in the next episode of the Fan Fair. He's doing a John Hughes extravaganza. I'm talking Breakfast Club, Ferris Bueller, 16 Candles, all that stuff. It's going to be great. All Make great sure to movies. check that out. Yep. And Adam, you take care, man. See ya. See ya.